Welcome everyone to the Generational Zeitgeist podcast by Lostra UM India. This is a podcast where we discuss all things Gen Z. This is the second podcast of the series and today we'll be discussing how Gen Zs interact with brand and therefore how the brand should interact with Gen Zs. If you're new to the podcast and you like listening to this, you can uh, add to your podcast list and share with your friends, colleagues and fellow marketers. We'll be dropping a few podcasts in coming few days and you can go back and listen to the previous podcast on uh, what are the key factors that really stood out to us about the Gen Zs. Uh, I'm Kulnath and you'll have to bear with my voice through the podcast. Along with me, there's Aditi, who's the CEO of Low Star India, our Mark Darshaka strategy guru. Just to balance the voices, we have Aditi with us. Hi, Aditi. Hi, Hi Kula. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, a quick snapshot of what our study and our a podcast is all about uh, over the last 2 years we have uh, done a fair amount of research using a mix of techniques uh, both quantitative as well as qualitative and uh, depth discussions with gen z the unique thing that we have uh, done in this approach is to actually do an insider view by roping in gen z's to do this study for us and it has given us very very interesting insights in terms of how this group of people think uh how how do they engage with different products categories brands what is their life view and what can we learn as marketers and communicators in terms of designing our approach for them hopefully you'll enjoy this and take away some bits for how you want to work and design your uh, brand campaigns yep so we'll get on with those uh, few things that we want to talk about how gen z's interact with brands and therefore brand should interact with gen z's the first point is this that uh, gen z's uh, appreciate brands with strong fundamentals and strong proposition so therefore the brand should focus on getting their core proposition right so they appreciate brands and this is something that we uh, ended on on our previous podcast and if you can go back and listen to that also uh, is something that gen z's have a very, very pragmatic mindset and they see brands what adds value to their lives brands which has very strong functional uh, benefits uh, they evaluate various parameters and definitely skew more towards the functional parameters like quality trust uh, access price reviews recommendation these are the things that they definitely uh, value a lot so those are the things that they appreciate and that's how they evaluate with a very rational and thought through uh, perspective so uh, whichever brands focuses on that uh, tend to thrive a lot today so uh, as we saw you know gen z uh, because of the information mm-hmm. that they are exposed to because of yeah. the kind of access they have to different kind of things yeah. are a lot more aware yeah. uh, than previous generations yes. uh, they are also very rational in terms of making their choices yeah. and uh, hence you know the way they evaluate a brand is to look at what is it that the brand is doing for me so yeah. uh, for me is uh, you know yes that seems to be obvious obviously all of us look at brands mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. they do for us mm-hmm. but for them the for me is defined very very tightly in terms of the individual yeah. so the, the a very strong sense of individuality in terms of what is it doing for me as an individual okay. and it's okay for me to make my brand choices and and my brand decisions based on that mm-hmm. versus what maybe other people in my group or other Uh, people that i know uh, have chosen so mm-hmm. yes i do take the learnings uh, there is a, a lot of exposure that i have to what influencers are saying or my, what my friends are saying mm-hmm. i watch the reviews yeah, and everything yeah. but the decision is is a very rational and uh, in a sense thought through yeah. and what that does is you know brands which are established brands which are large and have been around for some time yeah. not necessarily they will by default become my go to brands yeah Yeah. they will be uh, probably carried forward with me once i evaluate and see their relevance in my life today yeah. and reaffirm my decision that i will be choosing this brand because yeah. it is making sense for me at this stage so this journey of re- helping them reaffirm that the brand is meaningful for you mm-hmm. it is a brand which holds true to whatever your requirement is is a critical part of how uh, any brand or marketer needs to engage the gen z 
yeah yeah so uh, and brands which has very strong proposition or strong uh, value proposition for the uh, uh, this audience and also uh, consistently communicate that over a period of time that tend to build loyalty for uh, from the gen z so that's what we've kind of have seen and uh, observed uh, through the uh, entire research uh, process that we've done so brands which uh, actually offers something very functional and offers it consistently and communicates it consistently kind of build takes that mind space of the consumer and then therefore leads to loyalties and whenever they the, those brands some of those brands and we have spoken that which are the brands or some of the controversial time what we what were with the gen z is thinking of the brands they a lot of the brand a lot of the gen z's actually stood by and that that's what we'll probably hear now is a uh, uh, jasit he is from mumbai he's about 19 years old so how uh, during the whole controversy around maggie what his point of view was so uh, we'll uh, listen to uh, jasit for now I was I never left my idea we just used to like I have like three four packets at my house so that time it wasn't like I was buying GP noodles or like non noodles but I never left my idea okay and I mean didn't it kind of bother you that you may be just led in it or were you thinking I've been having no, it for no, so no. long so nothing happened to me as such maybe yeah, it just yeah, pulled yeah. aside and honestly I thought that you know okay there might be some fault in the production or like kuch ho hoga but That's never really stopped me to you know bash it. Okay. So there, uh, so Jasit is like one person who actually through and through liked Maggie and whatever the core proposition of Maggie. So and stood by Maggie uh, during the their tough times. So that kind of tells us ki how a, a brand which really captures a, a, a strong proposition and consistently deliver it over a period of time can sail through some of those hard times as well. Yeah, so I think uh, it's interesting now because the research that we did uh, was spanning through the COVID times, yeah. and now you know if we can call this current time a uh, rationalized COVID, I would say, mm-hmm. is uh, that brands which they know, mm-hmm. as long as the brand continues to fulfill the core that the brand is supposed to fulfill, mm-hmm. stays strong in their mind. So mm-hmm. there is there is a sense of loyalty with the familiarity. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, they do layer it with what is available. what is yeah. possible yeah. and uh, uh, they are choices which are made saying okay i know what is available mm-hmm. i know the other brands i yeah. know what is yeah. there but because of these rational reasons i have decided to stick to maggie for example in the current case and similarly for many other brands uh, that we saw in, yeah. in the last two years yeah yeah so uh, yeah in last two years also that this this lot of things have evolved and also uh, the ways of marketing has also evolved and that has kind of brought us to the second point that we'll discuss now is all about how uh, there, there are a lot of growth of modern brands which are say what we are observing these days that there are a lot of brands which they appreciate the gen z's appreciate which are uh, primarily a d2c brand or direct to consumer brands as we, what we call it and those uh, brands are also you leveraging a lot of the techniques or a lot of the uh, avenues that they have which at the disposal of modern marketers like for example influencer marketing so that's what uh, a lot of these brands are doing and uh, are connecting uh, well with the gen z's brands like Rage Coffee, Mama Earth, Wow Shampoo, and uh, even even Nike as a brand. So those those are some of the brands that really uh, stood out and captured the Gen Z's imagination. Yeah. So actually, if you pull back and think, it's really about uh, you know the rational decision making that mm-hmm. the Gen Z is yeah. uh, looking at based on information. So a brand or a product which seems to fulfill their need mm-hmm. is the brand that they will choose. Yeah. Uh, with technology has come this option of making brands available and. you know sort of powering the growth of d2c brands mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the names that you spoke about are really d2c and uh, if you see what is it that is the offer the offer is is a more uh, focused personalized mm. yeah. option for you yeah in a way which is also easy to do so you know the two dual things of a great product and easily available easily yeah. accessible or customizable to me yeah. is what makes it very strong because they seem to be brands which are more purposeful they seem to be brands which are more 
for me uh, mm. kind of a space and hence the connect that these audiences have wherein they are willing to experiment they are willing to look at and rationally evaluate whether, whether this is a choice which sort of holds true for them yeah and i think along with that along with the new brands i think the digital uh, ways of marketing and then the, which is constantly evolving expanding and there's whole host of new offering that are there there also which is kind of helped a lot of these brands to cut through and and presence their modern brand in a very new and fresh light i think we spoke to a lot of the consumers where they really appreciate uh, uh, nike and that's what we'll probably now hear uh, manvi jaiswal uh, she's from noida she's 17 year old and she uh, really likes uh, nike as a brand uh, the brand that has like you know attracted me a lot in the recent times is nike because uh, i was not that much into fashion before like not that much into you know me with stuff because i because my mom never allowed me to do it she was like it's for your skin and stuff. so recently as a current attraction it's nike because of the you know products they sell most of the products i'm not able to find somewhere else i get them on nike even if i am not able to get something at sephora or like mac or any other place i think i'll be able to find any sort of brand like even if i have to buy something from mac i can blindly trust nike so i think nike is something that that attracts me a lot so here the her benefit is clearly accessibility all kind of brands she wants she can get it so accessibility is the value proposition with nike that she gets and uh, obviously the trust that obviously you'll get the actual right product not the not some fake product from nike so that the trust and accessibility is one factor that kind of helps her to uh, like be very big fan of nike these days yeah so uh, one of the other things that i think we have to look at when we look at the growth of d2c brands or specialized brands mm-hmm. uh, is is the fact that they uh, built trust because of also the specializations they offer yeah. so you know you can you can buy similar products on multiple places yes. you could you could buy products on the product websites you mm-hmm. could buy products on one of the general uh, commerce sites yeah, commerce yes sites, yeah. but uh, nike is specialized, specialized and nike yeah. is focused and and that single minded focus which is possible in today's digital world is mm-hmm. something that is enabling them to hold and then finally the the trust that uh, she mm-hmm. has built is over a period of time yes. and what we are realizing now is that it's no longer just enough to have a product available and accessible at the right price mm-hmm. it's really about how we are designing the entire consumer experience journey and, yeah. and making sure that you know at every point of time the levels of engagement are pretty much seamless yeah. so that's another story uh, and you know mostly the way brands and larger companies are structured is these are siloed structures how does it all come together yeah. and the same thing in communication that you know how does what what a dealer or on ground person uh, deliver mm-hmm. versus what is the the brand ad perhaps talk about yeah. how do these uh, really sort of uh, you know contextualize one story yeah, versus yeah. talking different kind of things yeah. and hence this whole importance for the marketing community to make sure that we have this one view yes one view and, and consistent uh, yes consistent view and uh, therefore us as uh, communicator partners how do we make that something uh, which comes alive how do we look at this one single element which can be driven through and through so that yeah. the consumer experience the consumer journey remains very very true to what is the requirement from the brand like you said so they are very they they prefer consistency and uh, that's that's absolutely true and uh, something what we discussed previously on uh, the previous podcast is uh, all about seeing through at so that kind of brings us to the third point which is all about how they want brands to be authentic transparent and stay grounded with their core proposition and they can see really see through all of the frills and they can get down to the brass tacks and they appreciate those brands who are very authentic and uh, driven by purpose so that's what all uh, the, the gen z's always prefer yeah so it it uh, arises from the what we call democratization of knowledge around brands you know historically brands hmm. used to be one way where in brand would tell something and everybody yeah. would have that same view yeah. today because there is democratization of knowledge yeah. the story of a brand is also not just one way it's spread across yes. people know a brand not just from what they see or what the brand says but what other people say yeah. what is their own experience yeah. and all of it is available together yeah. you know earlier i would talk to 20 people i know yeah. today i can talk to 2000 people and understand from them what yeah. their brand is yeah. all about yeah. and that 
is is forcing uh, an evaluation in terms of how real is the brand promise yeah. how authentic it is how honest it is yeah. you cannot uh, you know so called faff yeah, you, and you hide. cannot pretend to be something yeah. you're not no. because it will come out yeah yeah and the, i think all those uh, all these forums reviews and the areas that they discuss and share opinions that kind of really a obviously like anything your anything the brand try, tends to hide obviously it comes to the fore naturally and also the fact that if if the brand has some flaws but also has certain benefits like they will rationalize the flaws if they like the benefit too much so that's that they will let they let forego that those flaws they rationalize it so that's another good thing that uh, the brand should embrace it i guess in going forward they should embrace that reality yeah so in a sense you know if if you look at what what this really means is uh because there is acceptance of reality mm-hmm. there is also no um, expectation of perfection yeah you know they are not expecting a brand to be perfect yeah. or they are not expecting something to be perfect but yeah. they are expecting it to be real yeah. so if if you can deliver something talk about it if you can't then do not pretend yeah. because pretense is something that is not acceptable yeah, yeah, yeah and if you t- tend to hide it they will find out and once they find out rather uh, like you telling them honestly then it's a bad news for the brands i think yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, and also along with that uh, they also appreciate the brands which are uh, not just in it for the money they they are they uh, appreciate brands with longer vision and which vision is shared with the gen z's and gen z's also si- simultaneously believe in that vision so if that happens that also really uh, like builds that bond for the audience and uh, the brand so we'll listen to pranjali now she talks about a dead aspect of the brand so brands that clearly have a vision i think you know they uh, are not just present in the market for selling their product mm-hmm. uh, i mean definitely everybody is in the market for sales uh-huh. revenue profit and all of those things uh-huh. but brands who maybe go beyond it they are concerned about the society they are delivering quality products you know they are concerned about the consumers um, and yeah they're just not like a very uh, money driven company uh, they're rather a value and ethic driven company so you do prefer ethics over anything matlab it is a quality that you look for in a brand yeah 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 i would be um, i would be really happy if the brand does offer that and can you state an example uh I don't know if this is a relevant example, but Kama Ayurveda, it's an Indian brand, and it is, uh, you know, leveraging the power of Ayurveda and uh, sort of spreading that message into the Indian society that we already have our own Ayurveda uh, skincare, and why would you want to go for foreign products, you know, with chemicals and things uh, like that? Or yeah, they are already, already have. Ha, uh, already organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hai, that is organic first, and. Hmm. Yeah, and definitely a uh, like a luxury brand. So uh, why not have that luxury experience via Indian products and uh, Bahar ki products ko chhod do as well, like that. Uh, so yeah, so there she uh, talks about that uh, how the, how she. prefers a brand which which has a stronger vision a larger vision and also cares for the consumer so that care that authenticity that uh, authentic care rather is also helps uh, a brand to cut through to the gen z's yeah so you know this this particular quote is quite interesting because it helps you decode yeah. uh, what does this value care mean actually mm-hmm. so uh, while one would automatically assume that it means you know purpose led marketing you want a brand to think larger about society mm-hmm. and the consciousness that a gen z has but in this particular quote what interestingly comes out is the perspective of taking india to the world mm-hmm. it's not so much about what the brand is doing in terms of purpose within society mm-hmm. it's a larger view and maybe a nationalistic view of mm-hmm. the brand saying why should i look at a foreign brand when i have something which is indian and which is ayurveda and all and there is another Uh, aspect i think which which has come across we spoke a bit about it in the last uh, podcast as well this whole sense of nationalism uh, being indian mm-hmm. uh, taking mm-hmm. india to the world yeah. and and therefore pride 
yeah. a lot of pride in that so yeah. that's an interesting area that you know when we say authenticity and transparency and value of what the brand means to society yeah. it's not just about the traditional way we look at purpose yeah this is also a purpose yeah 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 certainly another factor that which will move over to now is all about how they appreciate agility from the brand dynamism from the brand so that's something is very appreciated so therefore the brands also should provide that obviously we went through this whole uh, time of like 2 years where the brands constantly have to adapt to things or change their product or offer new new things which kind of helps uh, people through this uh, tough time and uh, those whichever brands kind of have done certain uh, addition or or given some addition to their uh, offering has definitely stood out like uh, like for example during this whole time period when swiggy kind of helped or uh, zomato kind of adapted to delivering products at home uh, which are groceries at home which kind of really helped uh, even on entertainment like i think amazon introduced watch parties and all of those things the platform like house party really really stood out and uh, gen z and, and became a rage among the gen z's uh, quite a lot So it's interesting you you sort of uh, spoke about this it this is also an age you know gen z is an age when you go through rapid change mm-hmm. it's it's a, a multiple series of life changes which happen you know from from uh, being a teenager to graduating from school to graduating from college and yeah. then starting work yeah. so it's a it's a very concentrated period where you are going through rapid change and what uh, they want a brand or or an offering to partner with them is the speed or the agility with which yeah. you can also be with me in this journey of change so yeah. uh, because i have now information available easily at uh, i mean they are digital natives you know mobile is almost an extension of the hand yeah. you you want everything to come to you very quickly quickly yeah. and and rapidly basis your requirements and that interestingly now we are seeing in the growth of uh, what we call fast commerce yes you know delivery in 10 minutes 15 yeah. minutes yeah. because you don't have possibly the time to plan for it long term you know life is changing fast things are yeah. changing fast and i want things to be available to me also as fast yeah and uh, not just in terms of delivery where you know it probably is a bit logical saying okay i want something quickly you also see it in the way a lot of content gets consumed and created mm-hmm. where there is this rapid growth of bite sized content yeah, yeah. Uh, you know short form yeah. uh, simple views memes yeah. you know something which doesn't take too much of time yeah. it gives a message it it is pertinent to me but it's very quick yeah. and therefore the ability to consume or live yeah. uh, life in a very uh, bite sized multiple form manner yeah 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 that 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 certainly has like the content consumption has definitely uh, changed that but also uh, the fact that a lot of these brands which kind of constantly evolved and uh, uh, add certain uh, value adds uh, and uh, and change their product uh, which kind of adds more value to the consumer that kind of really uh, like the gen z's really appreciate that so that's what uh, i think daksh parik uh, he's a 17 year old uh, guy from mumbai so he'll talk about uh, how he really prefers uh, shopping in mintra and his reason why yeah i i prefer like i would not say i would prefer like i would i, would, I love buying clothes from online mostly of clothes not any electronics exactly okay. and any particular websites that you use yeah i use mintra Mintra, and uh, what do you think of Mintra? Yeah, Mintra is it's like it has a good UI, basically good good design, and you know you can just easily search stuff and you get it. And there are many things, multiple brands, and yeah, that's the thing. And you know there are so like you can choose many like you see you if you want to like uh, if you want to search for a particular type of clothes. So you can get it easily, and you know there's there's a there's a feature where you can just click a photo and you will get to get get clothes related to it, like vesti kapde. So that's a good thing about the online thing. So. So, like what we were what we were talking about, that whole thing about the quickly, I want my uh, thing to be done. So, I like a style. I click a picture, and then I get to see. Okay, I can get these are the similar style that I can get. So that's a very quick uh, way that uh, uh, they they shop and they like to shop. And uh, so, yeah. So that's what uh, it's all about. Agility. It's all about being dynamic, adding more uh, while 
getting the your core proposition right but still evolving with the time and at the right time yeah so it's it's a you know it's it's like a balancing act that brands have to do in terms of what's a way to give something more in in a manner which is deliverable yeah. so technology keeping pace with what is the experience or what is the brand offer that you want to give yeah. and rapidly adapting trying so two things i think brands need to look at one is making sure that you're aware of what are the opportunities which technology offers you quickly experimenting and trying to see what works so uh, this uh, click a picture is something now available across sites yeah. uh voice and use of voice and how it yeah. has grown over the last 3 4 years is another place yeah. that that we are seeing a lot of growth uh, so there will be newer and newer options like this it will be uh, mostly about looking at what can be adapted for a brand uh try hmm. and then probably you know what we call in our typical jargonized terms i would say is hmm. fail fast hmm. you hmm. know try hmm works brilliant scale out mm. otherwise fail fast and mm. move to the next thing yeah, yeah. because this experimentativeness this ability to continuously refresh the yeah. way you are engaging with the audience is critical yeah. and uh, moving forward this is something that brands will need to uh, you know possibly make a part of how they operate you yeah. know rather than the typical traditional way of thinking long term and short term and short term is a 6 month view or a 3 mm -hmm. month view mm -hmm. you have to be able to refresh your cycles maybe much more rapidly mm -hmm. whether it's through an innovation budget yeah. whether it's through an experimental focus mm -hmm. whatever yeah. is the kind of way that uh, one wants to design yeah. those would be the things to uh, you know sort of look out for the future and design the way you want to yeah. work yeah i guess dynamically evolve yourself very fast yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah so i think uh, so the, the, the now we'll move over to the fifth and the final point on uh, this podcast which is all about how they appreciate experiences so the brands have to enable experience while advertising and one way communication is good but they prefer the getting their hands on experience on the brand or at least a first hand experience of the brand that kind of builds more um, appreciation towards the brand and more judgment towards the brand whether they if the brand is for me or not so uh, more and more and i think we spoke about it a little earlier in the podcast as well is that it's no longer just my ad it is no longer just my product mm -hmm. it's no longer just my page mm -hmm. it is about the entire experience yeah. and how the marketing team the brand team the product team everybody is together in crafting the experience journey yeah. that that's becoming critical yeah. the other thing is it's not an experience journey from a communicator's end or a marketer's end mm -hmm. it's also an experience journey where gen z is as co-opted as yeah. much a part, part of, of it the, yeah. and contributing to contributing it. To it, yes. so so how does that uh, meshing in yeah. a way you know how does that meshing or how does that building happen yeah. what are the interventions that we are thinking of what are the interventions that we are enabling yeah. which can allow us to have this go forward you know in tandem in a way yeah yeah, yeah. i think uh, in the code that we'll hear it's all about like how uh, advertising informs but one needs to move beyond information and also needs to experience so uh, ninad he talks about that part yeah, yeah. No, they don't make me change my perception but they do tell me something that is coming up all right okay so for example if i see that uh, somebody says that this uh, This this laptop is faster than the other one. You know, experience the speed with us. If they say it like that, then I I am I'm sure that they have they are coming up with this new line of you know new line of technology. But has it uh, really changed my perception towards that brand? Of course not. I would say I will I'm going to use the technology first. I'm going to use that uh, feature first. It can go to speed and delivery as well, right? When paper boat came in, they were like, "You are you know experiencing the taste of your home and all of that." You know, mothers. taste and everything i so i knew that they are uh, trying to sell me a you know new product that then i know i can make a lemonade by myself at my home or i'm gonna buy myself at my, at my home i tried once and did it it won't change my perception to what what the product is so so there he speaks about that how ads inform him Uh, he knows about the features he knows about what whatever the product uh, offers but as long as can't get an experience of the brand uh, a, a physical experience of the brand or or uh, or even virtual 
you know make the final decision of whether uh, or judge the brand or judge the product whether it's good for him or not so that's something which is very important how brands enable like across multiple categories he, he speaks about laptop but across multiple categories multiple product segments how one can offer that experience first an experience of the brand or the product that's when the 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 gen z's or the the user can actually make up their mind and like i was just thinking of like when we were young uh, and uh, ads tend to do a lot more because that's that's the first communication that or, or the main communication that you see and you do not have too much avenues like we did not have too much avenues like going into the forums and all that stuff and too much like obviously there would be occasions there'd be situation occasion where we would end up in forums and get, get here get to hear from others but now there's so many youtube videos around product reviews you can get detailed understanding of all products not just on this uh, technology maybe not just auto but all kind of products are reviewed these days like like uh toys gaming toys reviews a massive thing among kids so so that way they get to listen to so many opinions so many views and then they when they experience themselves then they can decide which which kind of really helps them for uh, to make up their mind okay these are the features i i appreciate though some of the features might be uh, like critiqued by others but i value this so that experience kind of builds the whole thing uh, the 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 in the journey yeah so two things uh, i i think and it's a pretty much running thread one is uh, this whole ability of identifying what's in it for me mm-hmm. from a brand yeah. and therefore what is it that i really want so yeah. so clarity in terms of their own thinking and their their own requirement yeah. and therefore looking at which brands or or which products fulfill that yeah. the second one that this also draws out is the difference between a brand and a product mm-hmm. i may love a brand yeah. does not necessarily mean that i'm consuming or using the brand yeah. and and that distinction that yeah. uh, you know it just because i love it i will therefore do everything with yeah. it is not there so yeah. so very compartmentalized in a way yeah so gen z i think and much more than millennials mm-hmm. they have they have managed to compartmentalize this aspect yeah. and therefore important for brands to to make these things go together yeah, yeah. you know my brand story versus my product Plus, what is the the way that these two are coming together what's yeah. the way it's not a one time thing yeah. you know consumer journeys as we've seen have become more complex there is a lot yeah. more information a yeah. lot of ways that people evaluate you mm. don't know when they will come into your journey yeah. Yeah. Uh, they might come into it by seeing the ad they might actually just want to buy a product today and just go to the shop yes. and check it out yes. or go online and check it out yeah. so at each point or each connection mm. you must be able to deliver that story in a powerful way yeah yeah certainly and i think going forward like all these things that we've heard about the web 3.0 and then therefore the metaverse and all also would enable uh, the brands to kind of give them uh, a, a experience of the brand in a, in a more uh, maybe not physical way but also in a much more powerful way they can they can build those powerful connection going into the future so that's a interesting opportunity that the brands can explore moving into the future yeah So the, the most powerful thing I think that the concept mm-hmm. really of metaverse offers is the merging of virtual and real. Yeah. So how do you enable the power of what is digital and technology into bringing an experience in the real world? And mm-hmm. and how do you offer a seamless journey across? Yeah. And that's going to be the challenge that brands will face. That as we move into a world which is powered by metaverse, mm. we still continue to live real life. Real life. And how do these come together? What is it that I offer in a metaverse which carries forward to real lives mm, and yeah. how does your real life then can have a translation in the metaverse, metaverse. so that's that's something to think about as we you know look at some crystal gazing yes 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 now uh, looking back at this discussion today like what 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 was like the interesting thing that you kind of have noticed uh, so i think the key thing about gen z and the the way brands need to engage is is to understand that one a choice that the gen z makes today is not necessarily a choice for life So therefore you need to continue yeah. to engage and continue to stay relevant. Yeah. And and therefore be a, a lot more sharper in terms of bringing your authentic self, the brand's true self yeah. to the fore for this genuine connection. Yeah. I think that's that's the key and and uh, while technology is all pervasive but technology eventually at the end of the day is a facilitator yeah it's yeah. it's not the end point in itself so how do we make technology a facilitator and not get stumped by you know what technology is asking us to do yeah 
I think that's really cool. Really yeah, cool. I think one of the things that really like I uh, took forward was from this was that definitely like you should get your core proposition there like fit in but also you should constantly evolve and open to failure but like you said fail fast and move on fail fast and move on move on to something which is better so that thing the brand should definitely do they definitely cannot rest on their laurels forever that uh, my okay i this is my proposition this has been fine and i will not innovate that is not an option they should constantly evolve innovate and uh, if if there's a failure understand move and uh, understand and move away from that and move to uh, something which is more successful yeah that thing was really uh, uh, like like really stood out now uh, guys if you like listening to this and want to listen to more of such podcasts do add a uh, generational side guys and share this with your friends and fellow marketers colleagues have a nice day thank you so much bye bye